Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Star Wars Minute. It's your daily show where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate Solo, a Star Wars story, one muck-encrusted minute at a time. Whoa, whoa. I'm Alex Robinson from alexrobinson.fun. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. And I'm Ken Plume from KenPlume.com. Not a moof milker. Mm. Not a moof milker. Categorically, mm. you're all right. Just want to state up front before we get into it. Right. There I mean, I think, I think, I think everyone should milk. state. Were you two ever moof milkers? I uh, need I the know. money. It was 90s. It was college. <laughs> 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 well, Ken, thanks for coming back. We're talking, of course, about minute 23 of Solo, A Star Wars Story. Uh, We're halfway also, through. Uh, yes. What? Oh, you're halfway through. I thought oh, you were yeah. halfway through yeah. the oh, whole no, movie. Oh, no, you, you guys like, have oh. <laughs> months and months left. <laughs> oh, man. Um, anyway, yes, minute number 23. Uh, minute 23 starts off with uh, Han upside down speaking Kashyyykian. Shurawuk. Is it, is it Wookiee-ish? Shurawuk. Shurawuk. There you go. Mm. Uh, and uh, it ends a minute later with the beast yanking Han's chain as he clings to some metal thing. Hmm. Do you hate when someone yanks your chain? He's, he's hanging on to his metal. <laughs> um, I do really like uh the Alden Ehrenreich's performance uh when he's relieved that he Chewie kind of gets it, or sorry, the beast kind of gets it and is going along with him there. He's like, yeah. yes, like he's like this laughing yes, which is a good uh not only a good performance but also it, it's you know it's it's han solo so it, it it's good it's not not dead on like impersonation of harrison ford han solo but it's within this the character spirit thing that you know the, I think the trying one, trying a gamble and then being relieved when it works is a very han solo thing one of the things that i think was hardest to get a hold of in this film hmm. that would probably the, pull, the little pulled me out the me. most well, yes yes they're very people. tiny they're yeah. oddly tiny uh is the little flashes where you would feel it was Han Solo, Harrison Ford's Han Solo in his performance, mm-hmm. but then it would go back into not that. So it just would keep reminding me of trying to reconcile what I was seeing with the character that had been established by films that were far too ingrained into <laughs> into formative years and my head. Right. Mm-hmm. So... I think that was, and it's no knock on him because, you know, I think you've said it before is that it was a nigh impossible task to be thrown to sort of like overcome literally the ghost of Harrison Ford, just sort of going to be hovering over the entire performance in this film. Uh, And I think that was the harder thing to try and, because there are moments when he does perfectly capture exactly what you would think would be a Han Solo delivery Mm -hmm. of a line. Mm -hmm. But then it sort of slips out of that. So I think it was trying to find, and it might not even happen until the end of the film for me, was finding the rhythm of Han Solo, the character, rather than Harrison Ford performing Han Solo in the films. Although, technically, I think a Han Solo delivery of a line is where he dumps the line at the first sign of Imperial Cruisers. But I agree with what you He'll make it up to you. Yeah. He'll make it up to you. I promise. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so along those Throwing same lines. Fortune. Don't be a fool. <laughs> what, what you said on the way in here, that, that's, you know, Move Milker is now something that Han says, you know, like 50 years apart. You know, to, yeah. he, he, we've heard him say it twice with, with, we didn't hear him say it all throughout his 30s. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we heard him say it in his, like, you know, 70s 60s 70s you get more reflective when you're older and you start thinking about the things you thought about in youth i'm gonna start bringing things back from my youth yeah like wizard well maybe he's saying it but maybe by the time he's saying it in force awakens uh that's where he says it right yes Yes. maybe he's saying it more ironically like calling someone a jive turkey you know what i mean like in this movie in this part he's saying it like genuinely because it's currently back in my day this was an insult yeah, right. or it was like a you know a trendy thing to say, you know. Uh, but then, so then I he was kind of bringing it back ironically in his old mm. age, or so. yeah, or it was just maybe... an in joke between him and Chewie. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. I remember that time I called you a moof milker. Yeah. Like it's probably not even a thing that exists. It's not a real 
it's not a real yeah. insult. It's just like he accidentally, like in the in the heat of the moment, he called him that, and then Chewie is just like, "What? What's your, what is the movie? I mean, that's actually a, what is yeah, that? yeah, that's actually a solid job to have, right? And then like <laughs> that's like an in joke. There's a them. lot of it's money in like move milking. Like, what are you a move milker? <laughs> 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 Remember that time I was strangling you and you said something about milking moofs? Good times. Yeah. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm glad that we got to see uh, them still sharing an in-joke shortly before he died. There you go. So that's good. He kind of... Mm. Doesn't, that, doesn't that make that more emotional now to go back and watch that yeah. and go, oh, oh that's oh. their thing. That's yeah. their special insult. That's when and that's one time where it would have been good to see Chewie's subtitles when he was like, Rawr! he was like, <laughs> Oh, you move milker! You know, and it's like, just I, I heart milker. you. Yeah, how could you leave him? <laughs> oh, it's sad. <laughs> yeah, but there are more moves to milk. Yeah, <laughs> but then and don't forget, humans are like dogs are to us. Where a Wookiee will be, you know, we'll see in, in a human age and die, while the Wookiee's still, you know, a young mm. person. So. I don't, but he'll never share that move milking joke with no. anyone else again. <laughs> oh, that would be really sad if we if saw... he never drank another glass of move milk after that. <laughs> He opens no, up the if, fridge in the Falcon, and it's just cartons of move milk. He's like, "Oh!" <laughs> if they partner, uh, if they keep making sequels, and they show Chewie partnering with another human, and then Chewie doing sharing the milf milker milf moof milker joke with that guy, it would be like sad that, that or was... that guy's sharing his background. He's like, "Well, I have a back. I was a moof milker as a kid," <laughs> and, and Chewie just starts crying uncontrollably for Aww. no reason, just totally <laughs> inconsolable. <laughs> what did I say? What What was it? And then Han would show up as a force ghost. and That's right. not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, even have force powers. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking, speaking of uh, their relationship and things that keep coming back, mm -hmm. I think, now, I don't know. I'll go back and forth. I think this would have been too heavy-handed and terrible. But I had the idea, what if we hadn't seen the dice yet? And then after this encounter, Han keeps the dice because they remind him of the time that he's, he and Chewie are basically the dice in this. They're connected by a chain. Whoa. And so, like, if, like, like you know, the, they're going back and forth with the, with, the, with the chain between them, what if then they get out, they steal a thing, and there's, like, a, you know, dice on a chain hanging from it, and it's like, oh, like us. And then when we see the chain come back a couple, the, the dice come back a couple of times. It would be like, like the poor snippet of yeah, exactly. the sequel. Or what if that was one of the things that Han tried to throw at Chewie? Oh, yeah. Like a bolo. Why didn't he? He, like, wrapped him around. He's got it, like, you know, in his mouth, holding one each one of the dice yeah. in his mouth, riding around on his back. And these tiny little dice just sort of bounce off Chewie. He's like, really? <laughs> what? I think in a different uh, world in which this is much more like a prison escape movie, like if that had been... They're barely chained together for you know for barely a minute. So, right. Uh, but I, I, if if it had been more of like an escape thing where they were chained together for like an act, I definitely think that could have been a cool, yeah, a cool tie-in. Like or Han could have eaten the thing like, in his language, just yelled out, "We're like my dice." Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> He's been saying that the whole time. <laughs> um, See. <laughs> yes, if they had spent the whole upcoming heist chained together, that would have been funny. That could have that led would to have some been additional action, you know. Some, I mean, we, some... we get some chain comedy. We got, we got our, we a get plenty bit. of chain comedy. A little bit. Yeah, I might have wanted more. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Then, yeah, who knows? Hmm. Uh, so the, the Han in the scene says, "This is where he he pulls the thing down and it all crashes, right?" This, uh, this, is, this is that minute, right? Yeah. Yes, because then. So we yeah, now that. we can talk about did those stormtroopers survive that crash? Because they are wearing armor as well. So mm -hmm. it seems like if Han. I watched it a couple of times because they're also falling into what we see is at least four inches or more of mud. Because when yeah. Chewie's pushing Han down into the mud, that mud's pretty deep. Yeah. I mean, he could have pushed him entirely under that mud if if given a little more chance to do so. So you're arguing pro surviving? Because they're I'm arguing soft pro, pro I mean, it's what? A, let's say a 10 foot fall. How high would you say that those grates are? Chewie's yeah. I mean, seven, yeah. what, seven, five, yeah. seven, six? Hmm. Well, Han landed flat. Well, they no, it's got to be, it's got to be landed. higher than that because Chewie can't reach up with his arms and grab those grates. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm assuming he could have gotten out of there or found. Well, 
Han landed flat on his back when he was thrown and let's and say fifteen feet survived. Okay, but, yeah, fifteen feet. So and as you just but how heavy are those? Because we see the grates fall on top of them. I watched yeah, it a true. couple of times to see yeah why they showed no signs of stirring either of them. I think they should have a teamed it and totally had them cut to them pulling, climbing out of the rubble and holding their heads. You know, just to, to mm-hmm. they kind of did gonna, it earlier. We just got that, that with yeah. Yeah, you know, so I feel like they could should keep reminding oh. us. Oh, are no we going to report this? Yeah, no one's being hurt. In the in we haven't gotten things. the from a certain point of view book. Yeah, for no, solo yet, yet, right? We should I, I would love it. We get some some. As I want to hear their story. Mimbanians, what are they called? Mimbanese. Mimbanese. Mm-hmm. The Mimbanese Liberation Army. Exactly. You know, um, uh, you know, I just thought of I. You know, Ken. One thing I've been saying is, uh, in my dream, in, in my perfect world, this movie would have been like a remake of Cannibal Run. You know what I mean? With Lando and Han. The being... first one, not Cannibal Run 2. <laughs> I'm not picky. I'll take... Uh... But so this, so those Stormtroopers actually would have been a good place to have like a cameo by two class. You know, I guess we kind of mentioned uh, having Lord Miller be the cameo. Right. There, but... Which that's had to have been the intention, I would yeah. think. But I'm going to say I would rather it be kind of like uh, Dean Martin and uh, Jerry <laughs> Sammy Lewis. Davis or something, you know. <laughs> no, that's the this... reunion. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. This is... Yeah. They record them separately. Yeah. Secret re- reunion. Yeah. Well, I guess they could have even been Star Wars. Related. Tell him slower, Dean. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I don't know about that. So Han says the line, oh, you see what happens when you listen to me? Hmm. And and to me, that's a good example of a, that's a, like, that's, build, that's, that's playing on the relationship we already know Han and Chewie right. have. Right. But how is feel this like film not going to be that? Oh, I, I mean, know. Well, you know. Yeah. You know. But if if people are thinking for some reason of watching these movies chronologically, which I know some people, you know, mm. course nerds are going to do that, but but frankly, this... it is the same argument that legitimately we've yeah. all had about the prequels as well, undermining certain reveals and yeah. emotional stakes of the original films. Oh, and it's a minor little detail. It's not like I'm saying this totally ruins the whole movie or anything like right. that. Right, but it's it. I don't know, just something it, I was... it, But it is a weird chicken and the egg thing of it's a film that relies upon the familiarity, yeah. but is intended to set up what comes after. Yeah. And that's, right. and that's the argument that a lot of people have, and or some people have difficulty in reconciling with all of this sort of fill in the gap material. Right. Mm-hmm. Of, you know, who is this for? It's is it is it to bring in new right. audience and expose them to, or is it just like you know the the super fans and the pedants who who desperately want to see every single gap in the storytelling filled in and see it told explicitly? See, I don't want that. I want the opposite. I want well, I I do. I like this movie a lot, but I also want new gaps to be made, which there is some of that, and it's 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 like how did Chewie get there? Well, exactly. Like they like I open new doors. Well, or, like it doesn't seem like they don't seem to be pushing much for what happens after the sequels. It's like everything since then has been like looking back even farther and farther. A high republic and and right. It seems like they're afraid to move forward. Like no one knows what to do. Yeah, but we're forward. getting Kenobi. But that's again, that's a prequel. That's right. Like, so by moving after forward, Rise you of any... Skywalker, like what happened? You know. Yeah, but is it is also any- is it also too soon to explore that? I mean, a lot of this stuff is born and bred of nostalgia, the mm-hmm. impetus to do these projects. So I would think we're probably ten to fifteen years out from the nostalgia factor instigating a, a desire to explore that post Rise of Skywalker world. Mm-hmm. Like, particularly from a monetary standpoint, you kind of want to feed the beast that has the money right now. And that, for this area, is now the prequel generation has aged up to be the ones to be serviced right. by the storytelling, and which is what we're seeing. You know, it's kind of moved beyond the original trilogy being serviced. So once that generation ages up for the sequel trilogy, I'm assuming we're going to see a ton of content exploring all around that. Which is why something, I don't know if you saw it, like, um, uh, Star Wars, uh, Star Wars, uh, Resistance, the, the 
animated series that took place during the sequel time period right. felt weird and too soon hmm. to be sort of filling in some of those gaps of but, storytelling. But like, why is there not like when, when, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think the nostalgia thing's a big thing to it. Um, but like yeah, it's when, gonna, it's when, gonna be the kids yeah. with the toy box play, you know, who's going to be the Favreau of the future. Who's digging into the rise Favreau of Skywalker of the future. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, absolutely. And I, I think that's, I mean, the prequel kids are to a certain extent, the clone wars kids. I think there's a pretty consistent line through a lot of that. It's a, if you cast a wide enough net. And so then, yes, yeah, there'll be those that then, but don't get the look that you get on your face, Pete, whenever Ahsoka is mentioned. <laughs> Boy, I was, I, <laughs> you should have seen the eye roll that came up when I looked up Chewie escaping. Like, why was Chewie in prison? And it's like, he was captured as part of this. And like, uh, with the help of other, uh, you know, prisoner, uh, co-prisoner Ahsoka Tano, I was like, oh, come on. And it was like, oh, that that's earlier. I can't <laughs> wait. I don't have to worry the, about that right now. For the Ahsoka minute when that <clears throat> series comes out. The, the the irony is that that will be the show that I enjoy the most, and that's fine. Yeah. Is Watch it because of Thrawn? Is it is it Thrawn that's going to make it? I don't know. It? No, I'm 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 still because I think my bar is set the lowest for that. Here's a, you know what I for the longest time, for obvious longest reasons, time. I think uh, for a, avo avoided watching Clone Wars, mm -hmm. just because the prequels hurt me so much, and I had such a negative response to that that I did I wanted nothing more to do with anything related to that. And I don't know what inspired me. It was within the last five years of like, uh, I'll dive in and I'll watch. And it is hard going at first because that Clone Wars film that kicks it all off is just bad. It's just mm. so, so bad. But then I stuck with it. And, you know, by the end, I love those characters. I love the Clone Wars series and enjoyed it immensely and I'm glad that I saw it and it certainly contextualizes all the stuff that Filoni is moving into live action now mm -hmm. and it gave me an appreciation I'll never like the prequels because they're just awkward filmmaking I will always look at them and go this is not well done the, a lot of big ideas a lot of interesting ideas poorly executed Hmm. but it allowed me to see those ideas taken and explored and done better in that animated series. So I can go back and have a viewing of particularly Revenge of the Sith, which at the time was such a disappointment because it was just like, you had one more chance to turn it around. And I really hoped you were <laughs> going to turn it around by the end of this. And you didn't, uh, and appreciate that a little more to where now, if I hadn't had that journey and experience, I wouldn't in no way be looking forward to the Kenobi series coming up. Mm -hmm. But now I am looking forward to the Kenobi series coming up because I have a good feeling about that Clone Wars series, which I think is more of the dynamic that is going to be explored like, I'm fine with Hayden coming back, and I don't blame Hayden for the performances in those two yeah. films, because right. no one was good in those two films. <laughs> well, that's uh, the real challenge. If he if he comes back and he's still like, oh, everyone's like, oh, no. Like, oh, I mean? It was you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, you know, this is his chance. <laughs> All right, George Lucas, come back. All is forgiven. <laughs> right. It, you know, I, I after seeing the sequel films, particularly Rise of Skywalker, I appreciate Lucas more as an idea person. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was best at executing his own ideas, but I do appreciate that he had ideas and world building in mind. Yeah. Hmm. I, yeah, so, I wish he was the Kevin it, Feige of... Yeah, filtered through someone like Filoni. He was just like, oh, you know, I really yeah. respect what you're saying and we're going to make it work. So. I guess I mean to me in a perfect world it would have been uh it would be more like uh like the Empire Strikes Back kind of set up. Perfect you know. world, all the Star Wars sequels would be more like the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> well, in that it's it's <laughs> it's George Lucas as product producer and like creative head, but you also had Irving Kirshner there to kind of hmm. act as like as that kind of like 
also right. like even, Gary even, Kurtz kind of thing right. of keeping George Lucas's worst impulses in check. So even at the Return end, everybody the gets Jedi, either fired or divorced. Right. Even Return of the <laughs> Jedi did that. You know, yeah, it but, kept but, some of the worst impulses in check. No, but he but he also hired a director who was specifically not going to give push it back. Stuff. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. You know. So, I mean, it, um, well, again, it's the Kurtz. It's the Kurtz effect. Yeah. Right. It's getting rid of anyone who could say no, which had its ultimate, you know, uh, form in Rick McCollum in right. the prequels. And anything you want, George. Whatever, whatever it is. I just learned that Gary Kurtz uh, apparently uh, has a cameo in Godfather 2. He's uh, mm. in the Cuba scene, so I'm looking forward to discussing that go. on our show. Uh, so all I'm I, saying uh, is that I, I hope you learn to love Ahsoka, Pete. Mm. I, I, think I hope you so, would. too. I think once, if your kids get to go through a phase where they are interested in the Clone Wars, I think that might be the thing that... Mm. You or know, just you. Don't no depend one hated on the, the kids. prequels more than Raggy, and then Raggy wound up loving the... Because he watched it with his kids. I'm not, it's, it's, it's your not my problem with the, you know, with the prequel. I'm, I've come, yeah. I'm at peace with the prequels for the most part. It's just yeah. that, you know, I, I feel like every chance he gets, it's, you know, he's putting his D&D character in my Star Wars. I'm like, all right, like, chill. <laughs> it does seem like that's... Filoni, not Radke. Radke <laughs> probably but... going to be the wave of the future, I feel like. I feel like he's kind of going to be the... I mean, he is, he's the, the creative... Kevin Feige of... Yeah. 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 <laughs> So. so I think you're gonna you you, might, you better learn to love it sooner rather than later. Mm. Uh, uh, well, I do. Uh, Ahsoka like... and the designated hitter can go screw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my last note is a positive one. I think the the joke of Han Solo they get out and Han Solo goes. Well, first of all, Chewie throws Han Solo from yeah. the ground up to the top. How strong are these Wookies? That's pretty Very strong. Yes, yeah, suddenly the strength is back. The strength that could have <laughs> mutilated yeah. Han right at, from the start. Maybe Han Solo gave him a little snack right before they jumped uh, up. Maybe he ate those two guys. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> it was like, it was like a half an hour of Han Solo. <laughs> was that the Lord Miller cutscene we <laughs> right. didn't see? It was... <laughs> it's a little late. It's like the shawarma scene from Avengers. Yeah. It's Han and Chewie sitting there in the mud being, like, hmm, you know, oh, it's not bad. It would be disturbing because you know there'd be all troopers. there'd be all like blood all over like his fur right you know beneath his mouth so it would look right. it would like it would look pretty grisly of mm. uh, blood in the mud. But blood? it was Han trying to convince him to eat them. It's like, <laughs> no, no, do it. Go, come on, go ahead, go ahead. What are you shy about? I won't look. <laughs> Here comes the Tie Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so Chewie throws him up and over alley oop, and <laughs> that's because um, he ate too fast. <laughs> And uh, then they do a good joke. I think it's a good gag. It's probably the peak of the changed together comedy. But now has they... an emotional resonance. Thanks to well, Pete. Well, Han goes, mm-hmm. come on, let's go this way. And then Chewie immediately starts running in the opposite direction. And then I thought that was a good gag. Yeah. So. But, it, but it shows that now forevermore, they're chained oh, wait. together. Oh, yeah. I flipped. I, I was looking at my notes for tomorrow. I was like, didn't I have something about for that for tomorrow? And I accidentally looked at yesterday's notes. Uh, the chain yanking continues tomorrow. Yeah. So. Right. From yeah. this point forward, they'll be inseparable. Yes, and they and bolting. they learn to accept it in that moment. <clears throat> I think it would have been interesting if they were chained together throughout the entire uh, Star Wars saga after this point. Mm. <laughs> like you know the trash. Oh, I guess the carbonite wouldn't have worked so well. So I don't know. Then it would have been like a like a keychain or a charm or something. Like <laughs> to drag this thing. <laughs> yeah, and then even then in in uh, you know in the Force Awakens. When he, like yeah. Han falls off the bridge and you see the chain slowly unraveling, it's true. He's like, "Oh no, 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 no!" Like, <laughs> no, it, it would have been fun to have sort of I mean, a scene down. of of Boba <laughs> Fett guiding the carbonite frozen Han down the hallway, and then you have that long beat as you see the chain dragging the frozen <laughs> as Chewbacca she was him. hopping backwards behind him <laughs> with his leg being pulled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does he resist or is he just, is he resigned to it? Like, is he still trying to I mean, pull it? I mean, it's what, it? 20 years later at that point, I think he probably is pretty right. much like, this is, uh, this is my lot. This is, this is what friendship is. <laughs> Stupid life debt. <laughs> and then we see, I mean, you know, I mean, hasn't Star Wars been pretty much proven to you too, that it's just. <laughs> Boba Fett loads Han Solo into Boba Fett's starship and flies off and she's like, <sighs> and then gets <laughs> whisked away into the air. It's always a, the chain is long enough for that comedy beat. That's the yeah. important part. Is it always oh, you, before the yank? You see that sort of shrug, yeah, that Chewbacca does because okay. he's oh, here. We go again. Is the joke that Chewie's always on the receiving end? Are there any time where Han's on the receiving end, or is that is it that that's the joke that right? Yeah, no, he's it's always Han that's dragging Chewie yeah. into all of these misadventures. Right, it's never the, instigated by big, Chewbacca. Yeah, strong guy. So it's always like, hmm. yeah, that does make sense. Um. 
well, this right. is, and, oh, these yeah, are the yeah. scenes that really felt the most that was the, the weird vibe coming into this segment of the film with Beckett's crew mm-hmm. that you really got a sense of the guardians of the galaxy mm-hmm. aspect bit, yeah. of his crew. Well, sorry, when you first see with, him, he's doing that kind of star Lord, like shooting and gun twirling. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I mean, how more rocket can Rio be mm. in it's execution? Rocket like Rio. sort of like a, a, a friendlier five more Rio, five more. Uh, and this, this is the beats that really felt like this is trying to pull in that sort of vibe and humor before, you know, we lose them all. Uh, but yes, this felt like a guardians of the galaxy film sort of shoehorned into. And we learned that there was another, uh, crew member who was cut out of the scenes. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about him. Corso. Uh, talk about him. Is that on Friday? Friday. I have notes. Corso notes on Friday. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think that, uh, that was my, Let's see if there's anything else that I had. Oh, <laughs> I do want to mention because it really shows up again in here is Rio's pronunciation of Wookiee. Yeah. That's, I have that for tomorrow too. Yeah. That but it tomorrow. shows up for the first time in this scene. Uh, and just how weird it is to me, but we can talk about it tomorrow. All right, so I suppose that'll wrap up minute number 23, our discussion of it. But we want you to join the discussion, dear listener. Uh, call our hotline, 8-Day Greedo, and uh, give us your thoughts on uh, the solo movie. Maybe something uh, coming up, something uh, short and funny, perhaps? Uh, let us know what you think of, let's say, um, Ron yeah. Howard's brother having a cameo. That come, That's oh. in this movie, right? Yeah, that's later. Oh, right, right. Yeah. We want to talk we about stuff that's later. Something in the right. future, yeah. We right, so. Thurm Scissor Punch. Therm Scissor Punch, Lando, anything coming up in the Six future. Eyes. Uh, so, yes, I call it a day Greedo. And uh, here's something we haven't discussed in a while, Pete. What's our, do we still have our mailbox open? Yes, we do. And I always forget what it is. P.O. Box 20139, I believe. Um, Greedo Square Station. Greedo Square Station, New York, New York, 10001. So, yes, uh, give send us, us some physical, stuff. Send us some mail. Uh, and then meet us again here tomorrow. Another Star Wars minute. Star Wars minute. Star Wars minute.